something that um, there are, you can identify sort of some elements that play key roles in, in the formation of a culture. So that's kind of what I'm going to do, although there's lots of Jefferson in there, I'm sure. Um, so the goals for me tonight are kind of threefold. One is, let's define what I mean when I talk about culture. So I'm just going to try to make that clear without being too pointy-headed about it, but just to kind of say, you know, here's, here's what I'm talking about. Secondly, then, to talk about some of the influences that produce this distinctive American culture that's in full, really in, in full view by, by the Jacksonian era. I'll stop kind of just before that, because I don't know a darn thing after about 1825, so I'm not going to pretend like I do. I'm pretty good from about 300 BC down to about 1825. <laughs> after that, I'm no good at all. So that's, I'm stopping there for a reason. Um, so what are some of the elements that inform that culture? And then the third thing I thought we'd do, this is kind of for fun, but it's also maybe it'll give you some tangibles, because I know, you know, I know you got a lot less than that, so I'm trying to, I want to pitch some things I think are practical for you as well, is we're going to do a little activity with the Declaration of Independence. Um, we're going to read it out loud. You know why? Why? Because it was meant to be read out loud. It was actually deliberately written in a way and broadcast primarily to its first hearers in print, but also and, and, and we'll talk about the elements of it too, we're just going to fun. But I'm going to get you to help me read the Declaration of Independence out loud and talk a little bit about what it meant at the time it was created and then what it has meant to subsequent generations of Americans. So there's Jefferson's 